Hey, 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 Crips here, and once again, thanks for joining me. There you go. All right, what am I doing? I'm doing a request tutorial for a guy called David who's been patiently waiting for me to do a keyframe tutorial for Boris Graffiti 6.1 or 5.2 or whatever Boris version you use. Okay, so David, and for all those who are watching, I will do my level best to explain how keyframing works in Boris Graffiti. And I'm only going to do the basics because obviously I can't cover everything. All right, so let's go and have a look what a keyframe is. If, you, if I have a look at my timeline here, I see two nodes in the beginning and on the end. These are keyframes. Now, a keyframe basically is a representation of all the settings and commands and values that's over here. So I've got my controls, my pivot, my cameras, every tab, everything you see here is then represented by this keyframe, okay? So if I was to move my current time indicator and add a keyframe, say, like over here, and I change any of these settings, that would mean that when it goes from this keyframe to this keyframe, it would meet those settings that I've changed in this keyframe. Okay, let's go back to the first keyframe. Now, but the trick with Boris Graffiti, it's very similar to After Effects with the stopwatch. You need to turn on the keyframe. And we do that with interpolation. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, so let's say I want the word grips to go off screen. So by the time it hits the last keyframe, I want it off the screen. So let's go to the last keyframe and then move it off screen. Now, the problem now is um, nothing, nothing happens. And that's because I actually didn't turn on this keyframe, okay? So let's go back to the first keyframe and highlight that. So like I said before, we need to turn on the keyframe and with the interpolation. This is my interpolation here, okay? So if I right click on here or left click, sorry, left click, and then I'm gonna choose a command and I'm gonna choose the word linear on both the X and, and the Y, okay? X and Y, and then I'm gonna go to my last keyframe and then I'm gonna move this. So now if I use my time, current time indicator, you'll see that it moves. Okay, you go, well, how did that happen? All right, so I'll give you a quick rundown on what I did. I went to my first keyframe. I used all the settings here. Basically, it was the default settings. And then I'm going to turn on my keyframe by giving it an interpolation command. If you're a beginner, you're most likely going to use hold, linear, ease in, ease out. Stay with those three because they're going to be mostly used. Don't worry about the others, okay? I mean, they're not that imp it's not that they're not important, it's just that let's not get confused. <laughs> All right, so then what happened was when I went to my last keyframe, I gave these control panels or the, the position here uh, a whole bunch of new commands because now my position of X and Y is different to the first keyframe. But I, I turn on the keyframe. Remember what I'm saying here, turning on the keyframe is the key and that's within the polation. So I'm saying go from this keyframe and then meet all the commands to this keyframe, and that's exactly what happened. Okay, so I really hope that I explained it well enough that you're not sitting there scratching your head going, dude. All right, let's uh, do something different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just get a new uh, fresh page going, and I'm just gonna type in the word G, and then I'm gonna expand that nice and big so we can all see it, okay? And then zoom that in a bit, there you go. That'll do. All right, let's do something very different. I want to now add a color to the letter G and let's say go from yellow back to white, or whatever it is that I wish to do. So like I said in the, in the beginning, you need to turn on the keyframe. So I'm in my text uh, settings here. I'm gonna go into my color tab and the fill is on. So yes, yeah, so whatever color I apply will fill in the letter G. So let's go to, I don't know, yellow. Uh, I've got to highlight it first, sorry. So, uh, highlight the letter G and then choose say yellow and press okay. Okay, so now I'm on my first keyframe and the color is yellow and I want it to go back to white. But look what happens if I go to my last keyframe, it's still yellow yet I didn't change anything. And you're saying, yeah, that's because you didn't turn on the keyframe. Correct, I didn't turn on the keyframe. So let's do that. Uh oh, now we have a problem. There is no interpolation in this window here, so I can't activate 
anything in this window. So what happens? What happens? Okay, good question. Uh, all motion graphic editors work in layers. So we need to go into the layer of this text. This is basically a container or an, uh, a folder, and we need to go into the subfolders, okay? So I'm going to expand this, and I'm going to go to my face, because this is what's looking at me. This is, this is the face that I'm looking at, and I click on that, and I highlight, and I drop it down again, and I'll, now I see the word text. If I go back into my control panels, I see a new tab called fill. This fill tab is identical to this. See, they're identical, but now this has... Look, an interpolation option. I have the ability to turn on this keyframe. So let's do that. So first thing I'm going to do is highlight my keyframe. And I'm going to change this color to yellow. Because this is still just representing the text menu, which is not what I'm after. And then I'm going to add an interpolation here to say linear. And now as I move this timeline along, it goes from yellow to nothing. There you go. I, I screwed up royally here. <laughs> Oh, that's because I didn't turn on. So this is a very uh, common mistake I'd make myself and many people. Some of these you actually need to turn on. So I've got to turn on this fill, uh, fill command, and then it should work. So there you go. As easy as pie. So a quick overview. Anything you need to do, you need to turn it on. To turn it on, you need to use the interpolation settings. And that is how we can then animate anything in Boris Graffiti. All right, so I'm going to cancel this. Uh, no, I don't want to save it. I'm going to show you how I literally started off learning how to use this. I'm going to go back into Customs Filter, and I'm going to look at something like this here. And I'm going to go, these are all presets, but the presets is where you can learn from because you can have a look at the, the keyframes already set up. I'm gonna press advanced mode. So now what happens is, um, okay. So here I'm having a completely different motion going on. So if I want to understand how this worked, I would break this down. So I'm gonna go into my grips here. And obviously there is a lot going on in here that the letters fly in and out and I can expand this. I can use this little icon here and expand it, or I can use this icon here and expand. Well, it didn't do it. It made me a liar. I should be here, right? Uh, yeah, there you go. It was just a bit slow, just like me, a bit slow. Yeah, I can use that. Now, everything you see here is actually here, and if I was you, work in the bigger window. Okay, but that's, um, this is what I'm after here. All right, so you can see here on the face and on the text menu, these there are some keyframes here so i can then click on that keyframe and look at this it used a type on text effect so i can study this type on text effect so if i go to the last keyframe i should see things move okay there you go it moves so and and if i go to the interpolation to see well what turned it on it used to decelerate so this is how i learned uh, how to use the keyframing in Boris Graffiti. I went from uh, Adobe After Effects to Boris, and I was, I was confused as well. So hopefully, if by studying some of the presets on how they work, you'll get a better understanding on how Boris Graffiti works. And that, my friends, I hope, David, and for those who are watching, that you get a better understanding about keyframes. And like I said, there's so much more in Boris, I can't cover everything today. So... For all those who are watching, <laughs> thanks for watching. As always, good luck.